We are looking at Genesis 15 from verse 1 to 6. Genesis 15, 1 to 6. And oh, it's a loaded passage. And I will hurry. I will, I will cover as much ground as possible. First thing uh, I will take up from where somebody stopped. When we talk about dreams, a dream is also called a vision of the night. Uh, many things that God will want to show you, and you wait till when nothing else will distract your attention. When you are sleeping, um, somebody passing by, a friend, thinking about a friend, thing, and all those one you see. So God has your full attention. And so he comes at night, gives you what is called the vision in the night. I pray that uh, those of you that God has been trying to talk to and you are not uh, listening, I pray you will visit you tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And then, of course, we can say that uh, before God began to talk to Abraham here, he did a bit of introduction. Number one, Abraham doesn't have to introduce himself to God. God knows his name. He is the one who gave you your name. As you will discover later on, not only has he the ability or the uh, freedom to give you a name, he also has the freedom to change that name. Because he calls him Abraham here. Yeah. Later on, he's going to change the name to Abraham. But now he introduced himself to Abraham in a very peculiar way. He didn't say, this is my name. He merely said to Abraham, this is what I am to you. You, in particular. Uh, later on, we found him talking to Moses, when Moses said, when I get to your people, and I say, God has sent me to you. And they say, what is his name? He said, I am that I am. Which, uh, those of you are Bible scholars, you know what that word means. He simply saying to Moses, on this journey that you are going, I better give you a name that is a blank check. I am whatever you need me to be at a particular time. That's the name he gave to Moses. Uh, the name you are going to need when you want to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt is going to be different from the name you are going to need when you want to cross the Red Sea. It's going to be different from the name you are going to need when you want to bring water out of the rock. So let's just give you a blank check. When you need supplies, I will be Jehovah Dyer. God will provide that when, when I need to bring water out of the rock for you. When you have to say to your people, the enemy you have seen today, you will never see them again forever. I need to be Jehovah. Uh, I need to be to you, the Lord of hosts. So let me begin to use some big, big names. And so on and so forth. But here he said to Abraham, to you, I am going to be, number one, your shield. Now, 
we all know what a shield is used for. A shield is what the warrior takes to battle to make sure he will come back home without a scratch. A sword is what you use to fight. A shield is what you use to defend yourself. He said, I am going to be to you, Abraham, your defender. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 and 7. Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 and 7. May declare that if you obey him, you will not have to fight against enemies when they come against you. The Almighty God will smite them before you become and they run. So you will get victory without a fight. That means victory without a scratch. I will see to it, Abraham, that in the, for the rest of your life, you won't suffer a defeat. That's what he said. And we'll find uh, quite a few uh, examples there. In Second Chronicles chapter 20, for example, Second Chronicles 20, from verse 1 to 25. When the king had to fight, when the Jehoshaphat had to fight three kings, he did not do any fighting. All he did with his people was to sin. God made sure that the enemies defeated themselves. With the result of getting any moon, they came home with a lot of treasure. And in Revelation chapter 12, verse 10 to 11, Revelation 12, verse 10 to 11, we have that shield in the form of the blood of Jesus Christ. They overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb. He said, I will not only be your shield, I will be your exceeding great reward. Not just your reward. Not just your great reward, but exceeding great reward. That means reward that will be so much that you yourself will say, this is too much. And David said it in Psalm 23, verse 5. Psalm 23, verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And then thou anointed my hair with oil till my cup runs over. Exceeding great reward. And when we talk about exceeding great reward, you, you find several other examples. Second Chronicles chapter 1, from verse 6 to 15. Second Chronicles 1, 6 to 15. When Solomon offered a thousand burnt offerings to God, God decided to reward him. What the reward? One, he got everything he said he wanted. Two, everything he didn't ask for, God said, I will Then to make it exceeding, God said, there will be nobody like you ever, whether before or after. David said in Psalm 34, verse 1, Psalm 34, verse 1, he said, I will bless the Lord at all times. His prayer shall continually be in my mouth. God said, fine, let, let's, let's reward this God. Particularly as David moved on to say, I want to build a house for God. Second Samuel chapter 7, from verse 1 to 29. Second Samuel chapter 7, 1 to 29. God said, yes, okay, you want to build a house for me? I will reward you. What I will reward you with is that there will always be a king on your throne. And to establish your kingdom forever. If you, if, uh, any of your children to misbehave, like uh, the king of, uh, the children of, um, like King Saul be misbehave, I will beat them, punish them. But there will always be a king on your throne. Today, we call Jesus Christ 
the son of David. That is a king that is reigning forever. And he is from the house of David. So he is a great, it's an exceeding great rewarder. But even before he introduced himself, he had said, fear not. We shouldn't take that one lightly. I believe I've mentioned it before that in the Bible there are 365 fair knots. One for each day of the year. Wake up in the morning, the first thing you should hear from God. Clearly that as God has been saying, whether you are hearing it or not, is today my son, my child, fear not. You can go through any day with fear. If anything tries to frighten you, tell that thing. My daddy has said this morning, I should not fear. And then, uh, he brought Abraham out in that vision and showed him the stars in heaven and asked him to count to them if he can. Up to today, scientists are still discovering new stars. Up to today, the number that has been discovered thus far is difficult to explain in simple language. When we say one million, you can understand it. When we say one billion, it's still easy for you to, to swallow. When we say one trillion, you are beginning to wonder what exactly are we talking about. Because a trillion is a thousand billion. A billion is a thousand million. Uh, but the number of stars in just one galaxy, uh, I don't know what is a galaxy. <laughs> the number of stars in a galaxy is close to trillions. The number of galaxies is, uh, is close to a trillion. And we are still discovering more. So when we talk about stars, just don't bother counting. And now God was speaking to somebody who was barren. And so your children will be Stars. Today, in every part of the world where you find Christians, there are seeds of Abraham. Add to that all those who are Muslims, because their forefather was also a seed of Abraham. They too belong to the person. When you consider the number of Christians that had lived and died since Jesus Christ came, <laughs> and you add that one to the Muslims all these years since Muhammad came and died, you will have a rough idea how many children are children of the brother. God hasn't finished yet. Every time somebody gives his life to Jesus Christ, Abraham has got a new baby. How can anybody believe that? Well, Romans chapter 4, verse 17. Romans 4, verse 17 tells us that the reason Abraham was able to believe was that God was still that he not out to be there. The Almighty God says to you that you are going to be great. Don't look at your present situation. You will be great. Amen. Amen. If it 
tells you you haven't seen anything yet. Say, yes, Lord, thank you. Because that brings us to the crucial point. Abraham believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. So we're talking about faith. We're talking about faith for a day or two. Faith pleases God. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Hebrews 11, verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. What is the meaning of that? If you don't have faith, you displease God. There are only two ways. Have faith, please God. Don't have faith, displease God. Now when God is pleased, then you get what you don't bargain for. You get much more than you can ever ask for. Like Abraham was only asking for a child. God said, I will give you children like stars. Solomon was asking for wisdom and understanding. God said, I will give you that, give you money, I will give you good health. Check the scriptures. Solomon was not sick for a day. And it was time for him to die. Nobody fought Solomon. Not a single one. All the time. Because his name even uh, meant peace. Now, when you doubt God, you make him unhappy. Uh, how happy? Romans chapter 14, verse 23. Romans 14, verse 23 says, Anything that is not of faith is sin. Oh, I'm living holy. I'm not committing adultery. I'm not killing. I'm not stealing. But I have doubts. So, if it's not of faith, it's sin. What does sin do? It kills. Mm -hmm. Romans chapter 6, verse 23. Romans 6, verse 23 says, The wages of sin is death. Now, what does that mean? The wages of lack of faith is death. I saw 59 verses 1 and 2, I saw 59 verses 1 and 2 made it clear. Sin will block your prayers. So, if unbelief is sin, then if you don't believe God, why are you wasting time praying? To whom are you praying? James chapter 1, verse 5 to 6. James 1, verse 5 to 6 says, You lack wisdom, ask God. He will give you liberally. He said, But make sure you ask in faith. And don't waver. Because if you waver, in other words, you believe today, tomorrow you doubt. You won't get anything. And without faith, can't even see God. Oh, no, sir. That's not what the Bible says. What the Bible says is in, in Hebrews 12, verse 14. Hebrews 12, verse 14. Without holiness, no man shall see God. Well, if you don't have faith, you are living in sin. You are living in sin. You can't, you can't see God. Many words. Everyone who lay who lays claim to holiness must be a man, a woman of faith. As a matter of fact, 
You will never find a holy man who is not full of faith. So if you are not going to live in faith, you know what my advice will be? Like I've always said, if you know you are not going to heaven, make sure you enjoy this work very well. So that when you get to heaven, you can tell the devil, I tried. <laughs> so if you are not going to live the rest of your life in faith, whatever God says, I believe. If you are not going to do that, just go straight back to the world. Enjoy as much as possible. I used to say, my children do this. I said, hey, pick up somebody. You seem to make a chance for making money. I plenty your money. Enjoy yourself. Marry as many wives as you want. So that when you die, and you go to, you will tell the devil, I tried. Uh -huh. So don't be like those who, the one fit in Christ, one fit in the world. You are not going to walk abs in absolute faith with God. That he knows what is best for me. He planned my tomorrow before I was born. Now don't waste your time. Go to the world and enjoy. Mm -hmm. Say, one day I was out praying. And that day and now we were just discussing the issue of origin. And we look into the issue of the origin of the camp, mm. the redemption camp. And uh, let me say, he started to say, well, what, what, what if you ask a child, what is the origin of the house? The young child will say, the house, the origin of the house, is the foundation, when you are laying the foundation. That would be a good answer for a primary school child. But a secondary school child, clever one, should be able to say, no, the house originated when the uh, architect started drawing. That would be a good idea. An advanced student will say, no, no, no. The house originated when the owner of the house thought about it. It was his thought, I want to build a house. I want it to be a bungalow. That's when the house began. But somebody who is even deeper still, you say, no, 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 no. The house originated when the owner of the house was born. But if he wasn't born, he, he can be thinking of the house. But somebody who is deeper still will say, no, 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 no. The origin of the house began when the mother of the landlord met. Because if they didn't meet, they won't, they won't produce the man. Ah, no, 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 no. The origin of the house goes back to the grandfather. Because if the grandfather didn't bring forth the father, the father won't produce the landlord. The landlord won't think of a house. And you won't therefore talk with the architect, etc., etc. Et but then if you just keep going, keep going, keep going, you will go back to the fact that the origin of the house is God. That is why if you see the genealogy of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, the son of Joseph, etc., etc., et to the son of David, who is the son of Jesse, who is the son of Obed, and then they go on and on and on. He was the son of Adam, who is the son of God. Meaning what? What is your origin? The origin is in God. He himself said, it before I come thee, I knew thee. How can you now suddenly become so clever and think? You can control the future. Mm. 
long before your father met your mother, God has concluded everything that's going to happen about you. Mm -hmm. So when he comes to you now and he says, this is what I'm about to do, thank you for telling me. May your name be glorified. Mm -hmm. It's merely revealing to you what he had said to you before the foundation of the world. I pray that the Almighty God will strengthen your faith in him Amen. like never before. Amen. But now you will never doubt him. Amen. So that whatever is happening, you will know that this is just a face. Final picture is coming, and it's a beautiful one. Amen. Amen. <laughs> 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 All of the phone at the end of the day, about the phone, you have to go to the phone. So, it's not the end of the day.
précaution faire les lait, oui. On ne pense pas facilité. Les lait, ils sont lors où il À Wadani, à Wadawi, oui. Et puis ça, oui, lors, bah, les Il s'est fait. Oui, c'est. Si vous voulez vous faire une bonne idée à la yé, si il s'est fait, alors, si c'est tout. Oh, ça l'a été pour un moment, mais il n'y a pas de bâle, ça l'a été pour un moment. Il n'y a pas de bâle, il n'y a pas de bâle. Donc, il n'y a pas de bâle, il n'y a pas de bâle. Il n'y a pas de bâle, il n'y a pas de bâle, il n'y a pas de bâle, il n'y a pas de bâle. Il n'y a pas de bâle, 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 il n'y a pas de bâle. Nelloni, tava kasi juro, a meji, a bravo, 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 Ça va se dire, il 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 va se dire, Mungkin ni kan tak pernah ada ojo tan bi yang itu ni le, ni le tiber, itu ni cang babi, boleh bunuh. Mungkin ni kan tak pernah ada iba, iba babi ya, iba de, itu ni cang babi de wan, ni bio, ati berbelo. Usung kan kan, kali le ni, taban tor lo, taban gula di si, no tor lo pakar sama, pakar kualiti. Dede oye bota man kola ye a ti jok. Ah, kan, sorry a man ye te. Si mba te, yon wapè sopre ou jou e lò lò kò lò kò lò jò ri. Ani, I was before yon before. Mi mo sa jou i sa jou e. Ani, mi pe, oma, oma, ani. Ta ba, so e mi to jè before before. So, koto di po mwe wasi no ayyo ti mongto ma ta. Ma bero, ojo to no ma ku lo ma ku. Ojo ya o bakwe o le ku. So, ojo ya bakwe ku si to pita ku le le du. So, iba yin la isa de, lo be si iba de je je. So, ojo ya bakwe o lo. So, bad day, but today I want to check with. I want to So, New York, I like ya. So, New York, we to